Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about Monte Carlo simulation of a simple equity growth model. Monte Carlo simulation is a computer program that simulates thousands of outcomes of a mathematical model. This estimates the probability distribution of outcomes. It is useful when the model cannot be studied analytically. So what is an equity growth model? A company retains earnings for investing in new assets. The retained earnings are accumulated as equity capital, and we will assume that the future earnings are related to the equity capital. A simple model resembles the historical return on equity and the historical fraction of earnings being retained and uses this to Monte Carlo simulate the future earnings and equity. So how does that work? We will normalize the starting equity, equity subscript zero, to equal one. The equity at the end of year T, which is denoted like this, is the equity at the end of the previous year plus the retained earnings. So it is the earnings for year T multiplied by the fraction of the earnings that are being retained. The fraction of the earnings being retained is defined as one minus the fraction of the earnings paid out as dividends minus the fraction of earnings used for share buyback net of share issuance. The earnings for year T are defined as the equity at the beginning of the year or at the end of the previous year T minus one multiplied by the return on equity for year T. The price or the market cap for year T is defined as the equity simulated equity for year t multiplied by a sample for the p book price to book ratio or price to equity ratio the starting number of shares is normalized to one the number of shares for year t is defined as the number of shares for the previous year multiplied by a factor that takes a share buyback net of issuance into account the per share numbers are found simply by dividing the simulated equity earnings dividends and price by the number of shares. The value yield is defined as a discount rate that makes the present value of the simulated dividends per share plus the present value of the selling price for the shares after n years equal to the current price per share. The value yield is annualized rate of return on the investment over its holding period given the current share price. All we need for the Monte Carlo simulation of this simple equity growth model is the historical financial data for the return on equity, the dividends divided by earnings, and the net share buyback divided by earnings. And for the pricing model, we also need the historical P book ratios. So let's look at an example for Walmart and we take the data from the financial reports. Out here we have the years, and then we have the equity amount is in US dollar millions, and we have the earnings or net income, we have the dividends, and we have the share buyback net of issuance. We use the financial data to calculate ratios for return on equity, that is uh, the earnings for year T divided by the equity for year T minus one, and note how stable the return on equity is. Then we have the dividends divided by the earnings and the net buyback divided by the earnings. And from these two, we can calculate the amount of earnings that are retained each year. So note in year 2011, we have minus 17%, which means that the company has spent more on dividends and share buyback net of issuance than it has actually earned. So it would either have to borrow money to do that or it would have to use cash that was retained in a previous year. This plot shows a historical price to book ratio, and it goes from 1994 up to 2014, so about 20 years. And the minimum is probably down here somewhere, and it is about 2.4. The maximum is up here, and it's about 12.2. The mean, or the average, is 4.7, and the standard deviation is 2.0. Now let's look at the Monte Carlo simulated equity using the data that we just had. So it is normalized to start at one and in the first simulation, it 
sort of goes exponentially and quite stable up to maybe 18. In the second simulation, it goes from one again up to maybe 21 or 22. And these are quite stable, and that is not always the case, but it has to do with the stability of Walmart's data. This is the Monte Carlo simulated earnings, and it, in the first simulation, it goes from maybe, let's say, 0.2 up to 3.6. And it is a bit more unstable than the simulated equity. In the second simulation, the earnings start fairly close to zero. And after 30 years, it ends up at around four. And you have to remember that this is normalized to have a starting equity at one. So these numbers would have to be multiplied by the starting equity, which in year 2014 is 76 billion US dollars. So we would have to multiply this, the equity by 76 billion dollars and the earnings, all of these earnings should be multiplied by $76 billion. And then we would get the simulated earnings uh, in dollar amounts for the future years. The dividends are more irregular. So they start fairly close to zero and they end up at maybe 0.6, but quite irregularly. And the two simulations are, they have a the same tendency of increasing sort of exponentially because the equity is increasing exponentially and the dividends are related to the equity, but they are jagged and somewhat different. This shows the simulated number of shares and they start at one, uh, again, because it's normalized and then they are simulated in terms of share buyback and issuance. And over a 30 year period, they go from um, one to about 0.6 in both simulations. These plots show the simulated price per share. They go from, oh, I don't know, fairly low up to quite high. And this takes into account both growth in equity and the decrease in the number of shares. You have to remember that this is normalized, so we must multiply all of these numbers by the starting equity per share. And also note that the simulations here are quite different. There is again a tendency for them to increase sort of exponentially, but they are again very jagged. The pricing model that is used is quite crude. So it's just the simulated equity multiplied by a random sample of the historical price to book ratio. The plot on the left shows the histogram of the value yield of Walmart when the shares are held for 30 years. So the mean is something like 14 and a half percent. And the most of the value yields range between 12% and 18%. And then the tails go out a bit. Remember that the value yield is the annualized rate of return from buying the shares at the current share price and holding them for in this case, 30 years. And the value yield is calculated from the dividends paid out annually and the selling share price relative to the current share price. The plot on the right shows a mean and standard deviation. The lines here show one standard deviation of the value yield for different holding periods. So what we can see here is that um, there's a greater uncertainty about the annualized rate of return when the holding period is short. And the reason is that the longer the holding period, the more the value yield depends on the dividends. As n increases, this part of the formula becomes more important and this part of the formula becomes less important. But when n is small, this part of the formula is more important. And because the price per share is very volatile in this pricing model, the value yield distribution has a large spread. There are several limitations of the equity growth model that you should keep in mind. The model is simple and it may not be suitable for a given company. We should also model growth decline because the model just keeps growing for eternity and it will fairly soon, for some companies, it, it will fairly soon outgrow even the 
combined size of all companies in the S&P 500 index. We might also need financial data for more years, or perhaps we should sample older financial data less frequently than new financial data. The pricing model is also quite crude, so you should interpret the results with caution. So we have seen a simple equity growth model, which uses historical financial data to simulate future equity, earnings, dividends, and so on. The simulated equity is used with samples of historical price to book ratio to estimate the future stock prices. This is a new way of doing Monte Carlo simulation, where normally people just use uh, price return distributions. However, the model has several limitations and it should be used with caution. The model can be extended in several ways and if you do so, then please share your results. This talk was based on two papers and this is a really long one and quite detailed about the equity growth model. And this paper down here uses the equity growth model on several companies and constructs portfolios. You can find the papers on this website and the links are also provided below the video.